Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Time to make a video today. I just got done answering emails. I I need an assistant. So if any of you guys want to be my personal YouTube assistant for the price of on the house, you let me know. This is five reasons why you should be backpacking with a tarp or at least just camping with a tarp. We're talking no bug net. So no bug protection at all. It's something that scares a lot of people. I get a lot of comments when I do it and make videos about it. I'm just torturing myself and how people could never um, bring themselves to do that because they're scared of many different things. But we're gonna talk about uh, five reasons why I think you should be doing it. I'm gonna throw in a couple at the end there, things to uh, look out for. So maybe some of the downsides of it. Number one, it's less weight, sometimes unless you're carrying this big old hefty thing. So this is uh, one of my big tarps, and it's definitely not less weight, but there are a lot of lightweight tarp options. That's a huge tarp. That's actually like a uh, nine by nine foot uh, square tarp. There's uh, Dyneema tarps out there that are super light. There's um, tents that can be set up independently as like a fast fly setup they call. So basically if it's like a, a normal freestanding tent with your traditional poles, uh, a lot of those you can set up without the inner bug layer. So it's just the tarp and you can even use uh, like the footprint uh, that came with it without the zipper from your door or if you have like windows uh, just the net itself it's just a lot of material that you can just drop that weight this is actually uh, the six moons designs uh, tarp and net that I have and you can see I can just totally get rid of the net and it drops my weight in half actually I think the net might way more than the tarp i'm pretty sure it does this is super light probably looking under 10 ounces um, and that brings me to my second reason why you should be backpacking with a tarp and that is bulk so basically and that's not true either because <laughs> like i said this is huge but some applications uh like like in that setup i'm my tent is literally half the size also if you're using like a freestanding tent like i said uh, you're not bringing that net inner section of your tent. It's going to be less bulky. You're going to have more pack room for other things or be able to bring a smaller pack. Once again, <sighs> not less bulky. This is huge. I want to say that this weighs probably two pounds. This is made by Kalinko. I, I don't know what this brand is. <laughs> I, I've been using this for a couple years now. It was uh, $40 on Amazon. The link's down below if you guys want to check it out. I can't vouch for it too much because ironically... I've, I've never had this in the rain. It's never rained on me anytime I've used my square tarp. So number three, it's just fun to uh, set your tarp up in different configurations when you're out there on the trail. So like I said, there's different types of tarps. So you have like your tents, uh, it's like you set up in the fast fly setup. Um, pretty much only one way to set those up, but it's still, I still consider it a tarp. You're still tarp camping as long as you don't have a bug net in my book. Then you also have like rectangle tarps. You have um, tarps that are made specifically for hammocks that are in different shapes that can't always be set up in different ways. My first tarp that I uh, camped in that wasn't like a fast fly setup was an ENO Pro Fly. So it was a hammock tarp. And it was like basically a rectangle, but it had some weird like swoops in the end. And I really could only uh, set it up in one configuration just because there was like no extra tie outs and it just didn't want to <laughs> like lay any, any way other than the rectangle or like the, the A-frame pitch that uh, it was meant to be set up in over a hammock. That's where the square tarp comes in. So that tarp I showed you, that's a three by three, three meter by three meter. So basically a nine foot square tarp. Um, and it just has tons of tie outs. It's got five tie outs on every side and then three across the face of it. I don't even know if there's an exact number of how many configurations you can set those things up in. Uh, because I think you could just pretty much invent anything or like depending where your trees are or what you're tying to or where you find um, level ground, it can just be set up any way you want. I've set it up in a ton of different configurations. It's nice to uh, have that freedom to set it up however you want depending uh, what your campsite is going to allow, what the weather is. You definitely don't want to like have a big open lean-to type shelter uh, facing the wind. It's just nice when you get to camp to have that versatility of knowing that you can 
pretty much just put a roof over your head with whatever you have to work with and you'll be good. So even if it's just the most unideal camping site ever, if you have a big square tarp like that, you're going to be covered and you might not sleep great, but <laughs> I mean, you will at least stay dry. It's just fun playing around with different setups. That's the coolest thing that I think about buying a square tarp like that. If you're wanting to get into tarp camping, I would say go with the square tarp first and not the rectangle, because the rectangle just doesn't have a lot of versatility as far as um, what you can do with it. I mean, I think a lot of those will have a lot of tie outs. But if you just get a good old standard tried and true square tarp, you can look up YouTube videos. I know uh, TA Outdoors was the one I watched. He had just a bunch of different uh, setups. I don't know like a ton of different tarp setups, but I could show you guys the ones I know in the future. But I say go with the square tarp. It's just fun going out and trying different uh, setups. There's been times when I went camping and I didn't even know what I was gonna do until I got there. It's fun to play around with. Number four is it just gives you a different feel. It, it gives you a completely different backcountry experience without that bug layer in there. A few years back, I made a video called Stupid Ultralight where I pretty much took nothing with me backpacking and it was not smart and, and just like the name says, pretty stupid. But uh, one thing I really realized when I was out there, and I don't know if I talked about it in the video, and I haven't really talked about it since, but just the sense of being out there with literally nothing. I mean, I had a sleeping pad. I, I had the basics, but I had no luxury items at all and no bug net for a tent and everything. Actually, I think I did have a bug net in that, that set. Long story short, the, uh, the minimalistic feel of just being in a shelter with no bug nets, just having less gear, less stuff. It, it's almost like a weight off your shoulders. It's less less stuff to worry about. It just makes me feel like a little bit closer to nature. Like there's almost like this aspect of like vulnerability, uh, like any animal could come up and just poke you in the face with its nose in the middle of the night. So if you're, if you're concerned that it's gonna be like a little bit frightening at first, like maybe start with a tarp configuration where you can run your walls all the way to the ground like a lot of time I have my walls floating so I can see out all around or I'll sleep in like a lean-to where uh, the entire side is open and I just have full un unobstructed view of the forest and that's awesome and I've, I've slept so much in the woods that there's no fear in it for me but if you're worried about that keep your walls uh, close to the ground maybe I mean, you could even uh, like close off all four sides, maybe just leave like one side, one little part open where you can see out. So you still feel like you're in like a tent, like you still have that security of having walls and stuff around you. I would start with that if you're a little bit worried about that, but just being out in the open, it's a feeling that you really can't describe. And I remember the first couple times I tarp camped it's just like this aha moment of like, this is like peace. Like this is where it's at. Like we get all this backpacking gear that's like super high tech and made for like luxury and comfort and like modern day conveniences on the trail. And a lot of those are nice and I use a lot of those. I mean, I backpack with a chair like 90% of the time. But when you strip all that away and you like open yourself up to getting eaten by any bug that's out there and getting licked in the face by whatever animal comes up under your tarp at night. Which by the way, that has never happened to me and I don't mean to scare you off, I'm just joking around. But it's an experience that I feel like you really, it's just an experience that I feel like everybody needs to. It's just an experience that I feel like everybody needs to experience at least once in their life. And this is also all like, area dependent. If you live in the desert and there's just like rattlesnakes and stuff like under every rock, probably might want to take some precautions. I don't even know. I don't know anything about <laughs> backpacking or, or camping in the desert. And number five, this is, I feel like this is kind of a bonus one because it's not something you think about a lot. I've never heard anybody talk about this and I don't ever think about it until I'm actually in the moment. So sleeping in my tent, I gotta pee, it's three o'clock in the morning, it's absolutely freezing. I pull my feet out of my sleeping bag, I twist to the right, slide my feet right in my shoes, get up and you walk two feet and you pee on Dan Becker's tent. <laughs> I love you, Dan. 
The ease of accessibility to getting, that doesn't even make sense, does it? The ease of accessibility, the accessibility or the ease of getting out of your tent in and out nonstop, it's so nice. And something you don't also think about is like the little bit of headroom. Like you usually have this little tent door you kind of got to go under. Your tarp's always like a good bit above the bug net. So it's like, take that whole uh, bug net or net tent out from underneath your tarp and it opens your living space under there like tremendously. So not only do you have more room, but you don't have to bend down as much to get in it. You don't have to watch your head or weave your way out of this tent. You don't have to uh, worry about zipping open and closed your, your net. As soon as you wake up, you slide your shoes in on and you, you, you're walking, depending what your shelter is, of course. But that's something that even the last time I went out, I just remember thinking like, man, this is awesome. Like, it is so fast, so convenient and easy to get in and out of this tarp. It's just awesome. Like, I wish I could do it all year long. And that brings me to my two things to watch out for when tarp camping bugs. We're going to backtrack here a second. So first thing to watch out for is weather. Obviously you backpack before, you know, you have to check the weather before you're going out. So you just want to be aware of what kind of weather you're looking at through the night. Like I said before, you don't want to set up your lean to shelter facing the wind. So you're just taking that blunt force. Oh, and I have a lean to, I always have a little flap in the front so that if it rains, I can get out in two seconds and tie that uh, awning down over my lean to, and it's, it's good to go. But you always want to set it up so that you are covered through the night, which is pretty much a given. Let's be honest. And this can go for like any kind of like ground dwelling, ground sleeping, tenting. You know, if you're sleeping at the base of a hill, if you're kind of in ruts, uh, if it rains, where's the water going to drain? Always be aware of that water drainage. And especially with uh, using like a ground cloth under a tarp, <laughs> this is invaluable. Do not let your ground cloth stick out from underneath the edge of your tarp. Your rain will filter right down. It'll run right down off that roof, right onto your ground tarp and straight to your sleeping bag. I've done it before. I was in a tent when I did it, but I, uh, oh gosh, just keep your ground sheets under your tarp. Make sure the tarp walls are the only thing sticking out from your shelter, but just be aware of your weather. Bugs. Okay, so this is everybody's main concern. Well, bugs, snakes, and I think some people might be scared of like bigger predators or like maybe raccoons or something. I'm not really ever worried about those things. Uh, mice could definitely get into food if you have food out. So when I tarp camp, I primarily hang my food. A lot of times when I'm in a tent, I don't. Uh, I'll just sleep with it uh, as long as I'm not in like bear country. And truthfully, if I'm sleeping with the food, if a mouse wants to chew through the sidewall of my tent, he absolutely can and come in there and get that. I just feel like... I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep chancing that until it happens. But if I'm in a tarp, I know everything's at easy access right in there to steal my food or uh, munch on my food bag in the night. Snakes are not something that's really a big problem in my area. Like I said, know thy area. <laughs> so I don't, if you have a lot of poisonous snakes and you're really worried about snakes, um, from what they say, snakes find a nice, warm, cozy area. And I've heard stories of people saying they've uh, woke up with snakes underneath their legs or in their sleeping bag with them. So uh, definitely be careful in those areas. Just know where you're going and what kind of wildlife is going to be there. But my main concern is bugs, um, mostly spiders and mosquitoes. So obviously mosquitoes, um, you know, if the mosquitoes are out, you pretty much know when you go to bed if you're going to get eaten alive at night. So I don't uh, tarp camp like ever in the summer in Ohio. The mosquitoes and ticks, especially here, are horrible in the summer. So I don't dare tarp uh, in the summer months. Um, spiders are kind of a concern just because they, uh, they bite you. I mean, like I said before in a video, I don't know if it's just the fear of waking up, finding one crawling on me that like just grosses me out more than them just biting me. Because like the worst case scenario is... You just wake up with a spider bite if a spider gets you. 
and I just hope I don't wake up as it's happening. So mosquitoes, ticks, and spiders, those are my concerns here living in Ohio, tarp camping here. So I avoid the summer months at all costs. A uh, little tip that I found is, so the bugs get worse progressively through the year as it gets hotter and hotter through like uh, uh, July, August, September. And then I feel like it, it takes them a little bit of a while to uh, die off. So there's times when I'll go tarp camping in November and I'll see spiders. I've actually found ticks um, on me in like December at Mohican one time up here. You have to wait till it gets really, really cold. So I like to wait till it get drops like at least into the low 20s, which they're still can be spiders and stuff around at that temperature but i like to wait till later on in the winter year and once the snow hits like you're good nothing's going to be out in the snow so i tarp camp all winter long basically and i'll even tarp camp uh into spring too and sometimes pretty late in the spring like i've actually done it into uh may before where i've seen that there wasn't a lot of bugs out so i'm always kind of like judging judging the uh the outdoors so if i go outside and i'm just somewhere i'm always kind of waiting to see like when the bugs arrive and it tends to be like midsummer uh into like late fall uh sometimes into like the first couple weeks of winter uh you'll still see spiders and stuff out so uh, early spring you're good winter you're good if you are backpacking in the snow you have no excuse ditch the bug net and go tarp camping you will not regret it oh don't quote me on that that that's why I have an LLC now, so you can't sue me. <laughs> These are my experiences, my recommendations. Do your research. If you just really love nature and you love just taking it all in, it's fun. I just say go for it. That's that's pretty much all I have to say. So uh, I have a lot of tarp camping videos if you guys want to check them out. I'm going to link them here at the end of the video. Subscribe if you want to uh, see more tarp camping stuff or more videos like this in the future. I really appreciate it. Throw a comment down below too. How many of you have wanted to tarp camp but are hesitant for some reason? And also, if, if you have, tell me what it is that you like about it the most. I look forward to seeing your comments. Hit that like button. Subscribe like I said. And yeah, that'll do it. So thank you once again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.